Hey guys, what's up? Barrett here coming at you today and talking with you about the kind of the precursor of the context to the quest for the best out of the box striker fire pistol between 350 and 550 bucks. Um, before you begin on this journey of scrolling through these videos and starting looking out, I wanted to kind of share with you the story as to why the, uh, the quest began and why I was even looking to do something like this. Primarily it's because when I was 21 years old, I was convinced by my friend to buy my first pistol. It was a SIG 226, uh, 500 bucks, brand new at a gun store. I was so happy with the gun and I bought the gun because Fox Mulder had the gun on the X-Files and obviously if Fox Mulder has it, you know that it's gonna be good. Well, I carried that pistol for a long time, probably about a year, and uh, I was, uh, my friend had convinced me that I needed to get a 40 because a 40 had more stopping power. Now, that friend was also my friend who carries an XD 40, if that gives you any kind of information. Uh, but it, it neither, it, he's still my best friend. But neither here nor there, uh, I thought to myself, I said, yeah, that makes sense. And so I started, uh, I sold the 226 in order to buy a 229 in 40. And so I was just like, okay, yeah, this is smaller and uh, it's 40, so it's got more stopping power, awesome. But I was having some problems with the SIG. It wasn't, uh, I was having some, I remember having malfunctions with the SIG, more so shooting next to the firing line as my friend did with his XD. And he convinced me that polymer guns were a lot more reliable. So I went out and bought a USP 40 because Bruce Willis had one uh, in uh, um, uh, Tears of the Sun. And so I obviously, you're not gonna argue with Bruce Willis, and so that's why I bought the pistol. And, uh, but the pistol was too big for me to carry. I liked the pistol, but it was too big. And then I didn't have enough money, so I had to sell that gun in order to find the perfect handgun I thought at the time, which was the Glock 23. It was small enough, it had the same magazine capacity, uh, I could carry it easily, I could shoot it well, and there you have it. Ever since then, I had found the Glock 19, a Glock 23 platform, and then shortly after that, it converted it to nine millimeter, and then I never looked back. I put 45,000 rounds to that gun, had a handful of malfunctions and 45,000 rounds, hardly ever cleaned it, and I was really impressed with the pistol overall. I tell you all of that to share with you that I was really stupid as to why I decided to buy certain pistols, who I was listening to and all those different types of things and the, the, the information that convinced me to buy certain things. Looking back, I wasted a lot of money in order to find what I thought was the perfect gun for me, which is the Glock 19 platform. And so when you look at this series, I want you to keep that kind of, uh, I want you to keep that in mind. I want you to keep in mind that I searched and searched and searched in order to find one gun that was right for me. And so when we talk about the quest for the best out of the box pistol, really I'm not talking about looking for a pistol that is the best. I'm looking for a pistol that is shootable. I'm looking for a pistol that's reliable and I'm looking for a pistol that's worth the price that we're putting into it. So I wanted to do that for you guys. I wanted to do that for my followers because on Instagram, what I was finding was a lot of people obviously can't afford the higher end guns that I shoot. And I understand that I can't afford them either. Uh, but that's, that's cool thing about getting sponsored. Right. And, uh, so people were asking me, what do I think about the CZP-09 or the uh, CZP-10C or the uh, Canic TP-9 S of Elite or the Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0, those different types of things. And I didn't have an answer for them. And I wanted to be able to uh, share with you guys the mistakes that I had made early on in my purchasing uh, career, if you will, my gun purchasing career. Uh, and I didn't want people to make the same mistakes because I spent a lot of money and, and I worked hard for my money in Bible college like you all work hard for your money. So I wanted to do a series that showed, uh, it, it, that gave uh, enough information to whether or not people are going to like what it is that they purchase because guns are kind of weird. You just can't buy it, decide you don't like it and then return it, right? Once you buy it, it's yours. And if you sell it back to a gun store, you're gonna sell it back for like 30% of what you paid for it, right? And that's just a rip off, but that's how they make their money. So um, I hope this series is beneficial for you and I hope that you enjoy it. 
Uh, nothing about it is objective. I'm not the best shooter in the world. I don't know a lot about guns. Uh, I know a lot about how to shoot a gun, but I don't know a lot about guns. So if I misspeak, if I give you false information, uh, you know, back that stuff up by fact checking it all across the internet. I want to let you also know that there's that what I'm sharing with you is nothing new, that there's a lot of people who've gone out and done the same kind of quests as, though, as I have as well, and they've probably even done it better. But a lot of people, for whatever reason, they trust my opinion, and so I'm going to be responsible with that and do what I can for you guys, my followers, in order to ensure that you all spend the uh, money that you work hard on, on things that, on pistols that you know you're going to love. So with that said, let's hop into the series, starting with the CZ P10C.